Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Angel Baby by Rosie and the Originals. And we're going to start out with a really easy way to kind of strum through it, and we're going to start on a C major chord. And the way you play C major, first finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret, and third finger is going to go to the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a C major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the C major chord, we're going to be going to an A minor chord. And when you play A minor, first fingers are going to actually stay on the B string second or first fret. Second finger is going to stay on the D string second fret, and third finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord, and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, we're going to be going to an F major chord. And we'll talk about a really easy way to play this in a moment. But if you know the bar F major, you do your first finger across the entire first fret. Second finger goes to the G string on the second fret, third finger on the A on the third fret, and the pinky goes to the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an like F major chord and it sounds really, really happy. But if you're just starting out or you just want to kind of avoid the bar chords, a good substitute for that is something called F major 7, where, where the first finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the third fret. And if you show them just the D, G, B, and E, kind of the skinny four strings, that sounds an like F major 7, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the F major, we're going to go to a G major chord. And the way you play G major, first finger is going to go to the A on the second fret, second finger is going to go to the low E on the third fret, and the third finger is going to go to the high E on the third fret. And if you show them all those together, then that sounds a G major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And actually, our verse and our, our chorus, actually, and, and our solo, too, are actually just going to kind of revolve around those four chords. C major, A minor, F major, G major, C major, A minor, F major, G major. But a lot of times with a song like this... <clears throat> A lot of times with a song like this, though, to make it more interesting, I, I like to add something called a strum pattern. And, and actually, there are two different strum patterns that can kind of work depending on, on, on how fast you want to go. The easiest one, I think, to, to kind of work through the tune is going to be a down, down, up. So if we took a C and just kind of did that a lot, we'd have down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, one, two, one, two. So kind of dividing each chord into kind of two beads. And so if we tried that through the song, we'd have C down up A minor down, down up F down, down G down, down C down, down B minor down, down up F down, down G down, down C down, down B minor down, down up F down, down G down, down C down, down B minor down, down up F down, down G down, down up. Now sometimes with a song like this, to make it a little bit more interesting, you can add bass notes on your first down to kind of make it a little bit more interesting, kind of simulate a bass player. So for instance, on the C chord, you can do the A string for your bass, and then do your down up, and, and then kind of use that for your strum pattern on the C chord. So you have A bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, and then when we get to the A minor chord, we have the A string for the bass on, on the A minor too. So on the A minor, we got A bass, down up, A minor with an A bass, down up, A minor with an A bass, down up, A minor with an A bass, down up. And then if you're using the bar F major, you'd have your bass on the low E string, low E bass, down up, low E bass, down up, low E bass, down up, low E bass, down up. And then if you're using the F major 7, you'd have the D string for your bass, D bass, down up, F with D bass, down up, F with D bass, down up. And then on your G chord, you'd have the low E string for your bass. So we tried it through the two that way, we'd have C with an A bass, down up, you are with an A bass, down up, F with a bass, down up, G with a low E bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, you are with an A bass, down up, F with a bass, down up, G with a low E bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, you are with an A bass, down up, F with a bass, down up, G with a low E bass, down up, C with an A bass, down up, A minor with an A bass, down up, F with a bass, down up, G with a low E bass, down up. So that might be another thing that you want to kind of try through the tune. Now, now another way to kind of feel it strum pattern wise is feeling it in threes instead of twos. And this is something called a compound meter actually. It's, it's kind of a six eight groove where right now we're kind of feeling it as kind of a one, two, one, two. 
but another way to feel the tune would be feeling three beats on each of those beats. <laughs> so for instance, like on the C, you could go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, kind of, kind of for the two beats. So if we tried it that way just a lot on the C chord to get used to it, you have C with a down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, C, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, C, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, C, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So we tried it through our progression that way, we we have C down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, B minor down. on that too. So on the on the on the down or the first down that we're doing we can still throw in our bass note. So we tried it that way you'd have C with an A bass down up down C with an A bass down up down A bar with an A bass down up down or bar with an A bass down up down down the bass down up down the bass down up down to the body bass down up down to the body bass down up down C with an A bass down up down the bass down up down A bar with an A bass down up down the bass down up down F with the bass Now something else you may want to try actually is there's some really cool moving bass lines through the tune where you can start out with your C and kind of do your bass down up down up and then do another bass down up but then you could go second fret on the A string to kind of lead to the A minor with the bass down up down up and then A minor with the bass down up and then you could find a way to do third fret on the low E string to kind of lead into your F. And if you're doing your low E or your F bar, you could do the low E string for your bass on that one. So you got low E bass, down up, down up, low E bass, down up. Or if you're doing the F major seven, you do the D string bass. So F bass, down up, but then you could throw in second fret on the low E string to kind of lead into the G chord for the bass, down up, down up. And then on the G, you could do third on the low E, open A and then second fret on the A to kind of lead into the C chord. So all together you got C with an A bass, down, up, down, up, C with an A bass, down, up, second fret on the A, open A, down, up, down, down, down with an A bass, down, up, third fret on the B, F with the bass, down, up, down, up, bass, down, up, second fret on the B, third fret on the B for the bass, down, up, down, G with the Louis bass, open A, second fret on the A string, third fret on the bass, down, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, second fret on the A, open A for the A minor, down, up, down, up, A minor with an A bass, down, up, third fret on the E, F with the bass, down, up, down, up, F with the bass, down, up, two on the low E, third fret on the low E, G, down, up, down, G with the low E bass, open A, second fret, be kind of a cool way to kind of kind of work the tune too. And then there are also some really cool intro licks at the very very beginning of this song that actually would throw in a different chord instead of the F major. And another way, a, a good chord substitute for F major actually is something called D minor. And the way you play D minor, first finger is going to go high on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, and third finger goes to the B string on the third fret. And if you strum just the D, G, B, and E string, kind of the skinny four strings, that sounds a D minor chord that sounds really, really sad. And actually, you can even throw in that D minor for any of the F chords that we were talking about, actually, if you like the sound of the D minor. And your bass note for that chord would actually be on the D string. So if you're doing the threes, you'd have the bass down, up, down, up, bass on the D, down, up, down. Or if you're doing the, feeling it in two, you'd have the bass on the D, down, up, bass on the D, down, up, bass on the D, down. Up kind of depending but then there's some really cool uh, intro licks where, where it kind of works around some of those chords and actually it's a little weird because the very first chord in the whole tune actually kind of takes the C chord shape and then moves it over one fret so you actually kind of have to do first finger on the G string on the first fret second finger on the B string on the on the second fret third finger on the D string on, on the third fret and the pinky on the on the A string on the fourth fret and actually that's just one option you could <clears throat> jump to these notes instead 
but but I, I kind of like putting down the whole shape and then that way I can kind of just go A string, D string, G string, B string with the pick kind of holding that down. And then from there you go to the C major chord and kind of do that same thing, A string, B string, G string, B string. And then really faint in the background, there's that little bass walk, actually, we were just talking about where you go third on the low E, open A, second fret on the A string. And then we go to a C chord and kind of do a different arpeggio. We got A string, D, G, high E, B, G. And then we go to A minor, but without the first finger. And you go open A, second on the D, second on the G, open B, and then second on the G, second on the D. And then we go to the D minor chord for open D, second on the G, third on the B, high E on the first, third fret on the B string, second fret on the G. So I'm kind of holding down the chord to get all those notes. And then we kind of have something around the G chord. We go open G, open B, first fret on the high E twice, and then open B, and then open G. So that might be a cool way to kind of intro the tune is that four, three, one, two, three, two, oh, three, oh, two, three, two, oh, 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 one, oh, oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, three, one, three, two, oh, oh, one, one, oh, oh, that's kind of an arpeggio. And actually what also kind of brings to mind is a way that you could actually finger style through this tune. So if you lost the pick, actually, and kind of let your thumb be your bass player for the D string, G string, or the D and the A and the E string, and kind of use your index, middle, and ring finger lined up on the G string, B string, and, and, and on the high E string. So I'm taking index to go to the G string on, on, uh, for, or for all my G notes. Middle finger is going to the B string for all, all my, my B string notes. And my ring finger is going to kind of have the job of playing the high E string or the skinny E string. And so, for instance, on your C chord, what you could do is use your thumb for the A string bass and then go index, middle, ring, middle, index. It's kind of an arpeggio or, or way to break up the chord. But it kind of matches that, that six feel, right? The one, two, three, four, five, six. The one, two, three, one, two, three that we're kind of doing with the strum pattern. And then on the A minor, you'd still have your A string for your bass, and you can use that same arpeggio on the A minor. And then on the F, if you're doing the bar F, you'd still have the low E for the, for the, for the bass on that one. So low E bass, low E bass with the thumb. So your thumb is your bass player. And then from there, on the G chord, or if, oh, and if, if you're doing the F major 7, you'd have the D string for your bass. And then when we get to the G, you'd have the low E string for your bass, for your G chords. So that might be another thing to kind of play around with this thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. And then from a classical guitar perspective, your thumb is P for pulgar. I is, well, index is still I for indeso because Spanish guitar guys wrote guitar methods back in the 1700s. And then middle finger is medio, and the ring finger is angular. So, so a classic way of thinking about this arpeggio is P-I-M-A-M-I. So if we tried it that way, you'd have, have the C major with the A string bass, index, middle, ring, middle, index, A minor with the A bass, F with the bass, G with low E bass, C with P, I, M, A, M, I, A minor, P, I, M, A, M, I, F with a P, I, M, A, M, I, G with low E bass, for the P, I, M, A, P, I, M, A, M, I. <laughs> so that might be something else you want to play around with is trying to do it finger style that could actually feel a little bit better for you too and kind of match the feel really well and it almost matches the intro too but but that's the basics of how you can play through angel baby by rosie and the originals so good luck